Good afternoon, folks. It's good to be with you once again. We welcome you to our discipleship program sponsored by River of Life Assembly here in Miramichi. And uh, it's a beautiful day outside. The sun is shining. A little frost last night, but it's that time of year. The leaves are pretty well gone off the trees. And Remembrance Day is next week. And then everybody will start planning and doing their preparations for Christmas. So it's a busy time of year. But uh, we are thankful that you have taken the time to be with us today. And we pray that uh, as we open the word of God, that you would open your heart and allow God's spirit to speak to you and to strengthen you and to minister something from his word into your spirit to help you grow and walk with him. And uh, before we begin in the word of God this morning, we're going to uh, take a moment to just bow our heads and pray and ask God to have his way. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and mercy. We thank you because you are on the throne. And we also thank you, Lord, that your word is forever settled. It's not a questionable thing or anything else. It is forever settled. And today, as we open up the pages of your word, Lord, we trust that our spirits and hearts will be open to you and allow you to speak words of life into our spirits, into our hearts, and help us to be strengthened and to draw closer to you and to have a greater understanding of your plan and purpose in our lives. And we will be careful to give you the praise and the glory. And Lord, we pray especially for those that are listening online today, through Facebook or YouTube, whatever medium it might be. You know where they are right now. And you know what they have need of. Your word says you know what we have need of before we even ask. And Lord, I ask you today to minister into their lives, to touch them, to speak to them, and let them know you are real and you're on the throne and that you love and care about them. I ask you to make yourself real. In Jesus' name, amen. Today we're going to uh, take a look into the Word of God. If you have your Bibles, we're reading from the book of Philippians, and uh, we're using the King James Version today uh, for two reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is uh, our technician on the uh, key on the uh, the sound system and on the video recordings here. We have uh, only two or three translations that are available without having to go into a little bit more technical things and uh, purchasing them online in order to be able to put them up on the screen. But the King James is one of the ones that we do have available. So for that reason, along with the fact that I was looking and uh, studying in the Message Bible, but when I went to the King James and read, I found that it just it seemed like it flowed easier and it seemed like it, it, uh, there was something about it that just seemed to, to flow easier and, and be able to, to speak to us. So today, if you have your Bible, we're going to ask you to open it to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. We're going to start at verse 4. Philippians, the fourth chapter, and verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation, verse 5, let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Verse 7, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. Today, with the help of the Lord, I want to talk to you about a simple to topic. It's simply what's on your mind. What's on your mind? Paul, writing to the Philippians here, after talking about the fact that uh, he wanted people to rejoice in the Lord always, he wanted them to be moderate in all things, 
He reminded them that the Lord was coming. He talked them to them about being giving uh, prayer and, and supplication with all thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. And then he said, the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he sums it up and he says, and finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, are honest, are just, are pure, are lovely, of a good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praise, think on these things. Get them into your mind, your spirit. Let them become a part of you. And think and dwell on those things. So, so many times it seems like we, are, we live in a day and age when our minds are being battled for. Uh, everything is, is done to try and grip our attention. And uh, back several years ago, the, it was, there was a popular subject that uh, people seemed to be quite interested in, and that was dealing with subliminal seduction. Uh, people uh, advertising agencies and, and things like that would put hidden messages in their advertisements that the, the mind didn't seem to, you didn't pick it up with the eye, but little glimpses and flashes of something that went so fast that it seemed like the eye didn't even perceive it, but the subconscious mind would pick it up, and all of a sudden you would be, it would be almost like an impulsive reaction to go buy a, a, a Diet Coke or go, go buy a Dr. Pepper or go have some Lay's chips or, or whatever type of a product that they may have been trying to promote. And those things were there. People were struggling to try and get control of your mind. That's the whole purpose for advertising, the colors they use, the lighting they use, things that will appeal to your senses that will make an imprint in your mind and cause you to think about that. And uh, I remember when I was a, a little kid, and my wife still talks, she says, how do you remember those things? Advertisements and little uh, songs and, and little ditties that they have advertising toys. I remember one, and I used to say to you like trouble, wait, don't run. This kind of trouble is lots of fun. Uh, Pop-a-matic, pop the dice, pop the six, and you move twice. Race your men around the track and tie and send the other back. That's Coner's Pop-a-matic trouble. And they still have the game today called trouble. You pop the little uh, 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 dome, a plastic dome, and it pops the dice for you. And, it was the and that was advertised when I was probably six years old. So I'm talking 60 years ago. But I still remember it because it had an impression on my mind. So we live in a day and age where there is a, a, a struggle, a battle that goes on for control of our minds. And the Word of God tells us that instead of getting our minds set on all the things around us as far as the things that the world would try and offer, the things that are of natural things around us, we should set our minds and our hearts on heavenly things. That's why he said in Philippians, whatsoever things are good, pure, an honest report, if there's anything virtue, or if there's anything good in those things, think on those things. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, I'm going to turn there quickly, the book of Proverbs, and I believe it's the 23rd, 23rd chapter, and the 7th verse says this, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. The first part of that verse said, As a man thinketh in his heart, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if, you, if where you dwell and your mind continually dwells on things, that's where your heart and your life, they're the direction that you will go in. So the Word of God has substantial things to say about following after the dictates of your own heart. The Bible says your own heart is deceit, deceitfully wicked and no man can know it. So the Bible says in uh, the book of Genesis, uh, just prior to the, the uh, destruction of the world by the flood, the building of the ark by Noah and the flood coming. The Bible says, 
every man did what was right in his own eyes. And it was because they did that, sin raged rampantly throughout the world, and God said, I will go and destroy the world. I'm going to send a flood, and I'm going to destroy this. Why? Because evil was so rampant. Because men were doing what was in their own eyes and what, was in, what they thought was their own understanding, what they thought was they should do. And instead of getting our eyes on good things, positive things, the things of God, God's word, the, showing love and compassion to people and, and doing the right things, instead their minds became seared and became set on evil things. The Bible says in the book of Romans, Turning there, once again, the, uh, here it is Paul's writings. And the Bible says this, the book of Romans, the first chapter. I'm going to start reading at verse 18. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God hath shown it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. So Paul is saying here that men, even from creation, God began to reveal himself to them, and he began to, from, right from the creation of the world, those things of God, though, though they are invisible, are clearly seen because God reveals them through nature and the things around us, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The Bible says then, verse 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. So he says, man made a choice. In order to make a choice, you have to use your mind, your brain. And man chose to follow his own ideas and concepts of what he thought God was and they began to go down to that, uh, that path and the Bible says that God turned them over to a corrupt mind. Why? Because they chose. They chose instead of following after the things that he had made plain and revealed to them they deliberately chose to go another direction. Genesis the sixth chapter and the fifth verse says this. Here we go, Genesis. And chapter 6. There we go. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart were only evil continually. So here it is. God is about to destroy the world. Why? Because he looked and he saw man, that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So what's on your mind? On their mind was evil and wickedness continually. And as a result, God sent a judgment. Now, let's take a look at the polar opposite of that. The book of Isaiah. Book of Isaiah, and we're going to go to the 26th verse, or chapter, excuse me. 26th chapter, and verses 3 and 4. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. 
he gave us a promise that he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him, on the Lord. So if we will cause our minds to think on and to dwell on the good things of God and his blessings and his plan and purpose, his word, we have a promise that he will keep us in perfect peace. Now, does that mean there's going to be peace all around us and that we'll never have a problem or never uh, face a situation or a struggle? No, that's not what it's saying. But it's talking about our spirit in our heart and spirit and our mind. There will be a perfect peace that will reign there because we will have faith and confidence in Almighty God. Ephesians tells us how we can do that. The book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. And here we go. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, and I'm going to start reading at verse 10. Finally, my brethren, Remember that other word, time we read, just read a statement that started like that, said, finally, whatsoever things are good. He says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the enemy, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication, for all the saints. So he tells us to take on the armor of God, and one of the things that he mentions in the armor of God is the helmet. What does the helmet protect? It protects the head. It it protects the brain, the mind. And he's telling us that we need to fight this good fight, and in order to uh, be victorious in that fight, we have to guard our mind. We have to take on the helmet of salvation. So if we will defend and protect our mind and keep evil thoughts out and allow good thoughts in, if we will not dwell on the negative things that this world throws at us continually, if we'll not dwell on the things that the enemy would try and throw into our mind to test us or to to tempt us, and that we may struggle with. Instead, if we will think on the good things of God, the promises of God, the blessings of God, the, the, the things that God has told us in his word, and we know what's going to take place in our lives because he says, I know I have a plan for you to do good, and he's going to do some great and wonderful things. When we begin to dwell and think on those things, peace begins to reign in our hearts and in our minds and in our spirits. Going back again to the book of Philippians. Going to start again, Philippians, the fourth chapter. I'm going to start at verse four again. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. You don't want to dwell on lies. You want to dwell on the truth. Whatsoever things are honest. There's no gray area there. You know it's an honest thing. 
whatsoever things are just. They're not, they're not, there's no pretense there for anything, but it's just. Whatsoever things are lovely and are of a good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned. Now, before we stopped at verse 8, but right now I want to read verse 9. And he says, Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. And the God of peace will be with you. What did Isaiah say? He would keep you in perfect peace whose mind was stayed on him. Paul said, if you will think on those good things, not the negative things, not the things that are evil, not fill your mind up with things that will corrupt your spirit, but instead you'll think on good, just, pure, honest things, things that are trustworthy. Then he said, if you will do that, the God of peace will be with you. He will keep you in perfect peace. So I'd like to ask you the question again that I asked when we first started this little Bible lesson today. And that's, what's on your mind? What have you been thinking about? So many times, something happens around us and uh, the first thing you know, our mind begins to dwell on it and then all of a sudden, we begin to uh, come up with all kinds of scenarios. Oh, they said that because uh, they, they, they don't like me. And they said that because they wanted to hurt me. They said that or they did this because they, they're, they're bad people. And, and we begin to fill up our minds with things that we, even, we don't even know if they're true. All we know is something happened or someone said something. We may not know the motive why they said it. We may not understand the situation or the emotional place that they were in when they said that. We ha we, we, our, so our understanding is just simply what we heard and we don't know any of the background by it. That's why Paul said, think about those things that are honest, that are trustworthy, that have a good report, instead of allowing negative things to start filling our minds and, and corrupting our spirit. So if we will do what he has told us, if we will gird up, the Bible uses the phrase in the King James, to gird up the loins of our mind. Matter of fact, another verse just came to my, to my heart. Uh, the Bible says, let the same mind that was in Christ be also in you, reconciling the world unto himself. So we can allow the mind of Christ to be in us. How do we do that? by dwelling in his presence and dwelling on the good things of God and his word. So friend, today, if you're struggling, if you're having a battle with your mind and your mind seems to go down a road sometimes that takes you into a place where you feel so discouraged and uh, feel like people are against you and that everyone's uh, uh, turning their back on you and you're all alone, let me encourage you today to turn to the word of God and turn to Jesus Christ because he says, I love you. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I am with you always, even until the end of the age. He said, I love you. And he says, I shed my blood and died on Calvary for you. And what a great and wonderful promise that if we will ask him to come into our lives and cleanse us of our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and he will come in and make his dwelling place in us and he will abide with us. So if you don't know him today, if your heart and your spirit and your mind are being filled with so many negative things, let me encourage you to turn to the one who cares and that's Jesus. One songwriter says, try Jesus, he never fails. In sunshine, his love prevails. Or evil, his love will, will prevail. Try Jesus, he never fails. And if you'd like to try him today, friend, I can assure you, you will find the peace of God. What's on your mind? 
Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity that we have had to be able to share the word of God. And Lord, I pray that somehow the words that we have shared with those that are listening, that it would pierce any resistance, any darkness that may be clouding their minds, and it would get through to the very deepest core of their being and help them to realize that if they will get their heart and mind focused on you, no matter how dark the night, no matter how great the storm, no matter how long the struggle, there will be a peace that passes all understanding, can rule and reign in their life, and the God of all peace will be with them. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to speak to their hearts, comfort them and minister to them by your Spirit, and we'll be careful to praise you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Thank you for being with us today.